The Wilderness Society is a national activist organisation committed to the protection and enhancement of wilderness throughout Australia. And here in Cairns, we've got a branch that's been going for a year. Now, when we're talking about wilderness protection, in northern Australia especially, we're also talking about Aboriginal land. Wilderness is land that is free, basically free, of the influence of industrial society. It's free of buildings, it's free of roads, it's free of the effects of, our, of, of industrial culture. And most of that land is also Aboriginal land by its very definition. So, the big push in uh, North Queensland now is to form a, an alliance with Aboriginal organisations, if you like. When you're talking about Cape York, you must remember that north of Cooktown, 80% of the population is Aboriginal. If you're talking about the protection of, of Cape York, you must also be talking to the Aboriginal people about the future of that land. If you, ignore, if you ignore those people, you're ignoring the best interests of the land and you're ignoring the aspirations of the Aboriginal people themselves. What's the relationship like? I mean, it's in a very early stage at the moment, isn't it, with the Aboriginal group? Yeah, it's a, w both of us, I think, are on a sharp landing curve. When you're talking about the Starkey people, you've got to remember their involvement with government, their historical involvement with officialdom. Now, their first contact uh, with officialdom was Captain Cook when uh, he beached the endeavour where Cooktown is today. He started off straight away by breaking custom, taking turtle that wasn't his. He went away again, but those stories about Captain Cook and his boat still remain in the oral tradition of the Googie Yimita. Now, since then, their next contact was when gold was discovered in the Palmer River. There was, a, there was armed resistance against that invasion, and at a place called Battle Camp, some 500 warriors were destroyed. The next, uh, the next contact that the people of Starkey had with officialdom was when the survivors of the resistance at Battle Camp were collected in boats, their camps were burnt, and they were taken down to Cape Bedford, a Lutheran mission, but a mission which for all intents and purposes could be viewed as what it really was, a concentration camp, a way of taking people off their land missionising them, civilising them, as they say, just trying to destroy that connection with the land. Then, again, dealing with the government, their land was given first to pastoralists, finally to real estate agents. And only now have they got a chance to get their land back. Now, it's not surprising, given the history of the Starkey people, that they're incredibly cautious when it comes to talking about dealing with government. Joint management of national parks, why should they trust the government. I think that when we came on the scene, when we found out about Starkey, they saw an organisation that didn't have that connection with the government. They knew that they weren't talking to the government, but rather, as they put it, with the grassroots, the white grassroots. And we've been able to start from square one without that baggage that's gone on for 100 or so years. And I think that we've had a chance to build something special up here, because, as I said, it's necessary, if you're going to protect wilderness in Cape York, to include the Aboriginal people. You can't just talk about a national park. National parks in Cape York are often places that are act as refuges for weeds, for feral animals like cattle, like pigs. The only people that have the experience of sustainable land use in Cape York are the Aboriginal people. National parks, it's, the job's beyond them. When you've got five ranges covering an area the size of Victoria, when even for a small national park in Starkey, like Cape Melville, where the state has not been able to control massive poaching of foxtail palm seeds, of parrots, of snakes, of fish, of turtle, how are they going to handle uh, an area as large as Starkey, almost a quarter of a million hectares? Now, the Aboriginal people have said that they don't want a national park on Starkey. They want that land handed back to them. They want, it, want to be given that trust, given that land, and then sit down and negotiate about how best to protect their culture, how best to protect the national, uh, national values and the natural qualities of Starkey. Now, to ignore those people, to try and ride roughshod over them, to, as the state government says, sending up a negotiator who doesn't negotiate, but basically says, this will be a national park. You tell me what little bits that you want as freehold land. 
That is not the best thing for the Aboriginal people. It's not the best thing for Starkey, and it's certainly not the best thing for wilderness protection.